Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another recipe video. Today you guys, we're doing another Korean recipe, one of my absolute favorite things in the world, Korean rice cakes, okay? We are making tteokbokki, but today we are not going to make the regular tteokbokki, we are making a non-spicy version. So if you don't know, tteokbokki is a very popular Korean dish and it comprises of what we call dok, which is Korean rice cakes. It's basically very chewy pieces of rice dough that is absolutely delectable and delicious and we use it for a lot of different things, but one of the most popular ways of using dok is Tteokbokki, which I think the direct translation is stir-fried rice cake. So you don't have to make it spicy. There are ways of making it non-spicy and today we're going to do a black bean version. Normally the black bean paste is often used for black bean noodles or jajangmyeon which you may have seen before if you are familiar with Korean food. I have a vegan version of jajangmyeon that is in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook link down below, along with many of my favorite Asian dishes. So again, my ebook is linked down below if you want to make jajangmyeon. Today we're making jajang tteokbokki. Jajang, black bean sauce or black bean paste, tteokbokki rice cakes. They're gonna be delicious, it's perfect if you've wanted to try the Korean rice cakes but you don't like the spiciness, or if you can't handle the spiciness, that's okay. We're gonna make a savory version, it's gonna be so, so good still. So, my mouth is watering just at the thought of it at this moment, so. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's jump, let's jump right in. <laughs> Actually, before we jump in, I just wanna show you guys the two main important ingredients that you may not be familiar with. So this is, Korean rice cakes. This is the one in the spicy sauce. That's the most common. And I'll link the recipe down below to make the spicy version. This is what they look like, okay? The, you wanna find the cylinder shaped ones, but I mean, it doesn't really matter if you find different shaped ones, but these are the very common ones used for tteokbokki. And right now they're hard because it's cold, but when you cook it, it's gonna become soft and chewy and delicious. It'll be the best thing you've ever put in your mouth, okay? so. There's that, that's the dok, AKA Korean rice cakes. Next thing you're gonna need is Korean black bean paste. Uh, it's called jajang or chunjang. It usually comes in a jar like this. You can maybe like take a screenshot of this, okay? And show your Korean grocery store people. This is what you need. Okay, make sure you get the Korean one. I'll link some things down below to where you might be able to find it online. It comes usually in like a black jar or something like this. So that's what you're looking for. These are the two important ingredients. Now let's actually jump right in. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to start by chopping up some green onions finely, and we're gonna separate the white parts from the green parts. Next, we're going to dice some onion. You can also finely chop some cabbage. I already had some cabbage in my fridge pre-chopped, so I'm just going to use that. And you can use any other veggies you want, really, uh, but I'm sticking with these. And you also want to prepare some minced garlic. As I always say, guys, I have a very simple garlic hack that lets me have minced garlic all the time without having to mince it every single time. So I'm gonna link that hack video down below in case you also love garlic, but you hate mincing it that is linked down below for our protein i'm going to use some veggie dogs i love using veggie dogs for tteokbokki i feel like it goes really well together something about the smokiness and i don't know it just goes really well but this part is optional you can either omit this or you can add in some tofu smoked tofu or maybe even some mock meat it's up to you i always like to add a little bit of protein into my meals so that i feel more satisfied and satiated and now that we have all those ingredients ready let's heat up some oil on a non-stick wok or a deep pan and we're going to add black bean paste on one side as always the measurements and full written recipe will be in a blog post linked below and as i mentioned the black bean paste or the jajang um or i think it's also called chunjang i don't know exactly but you can find this in a korean supermarket on the other side of the pan we're going to add the whites of the green onions and the diced onion and minced garlic we're going to cook these separately for a few minutes just letting it saute and letting it cook uh, we're going to allow the onions to cook and soften and this is going to be about two to three minutes and then we can mix it all together 
Now we have everything mixed together and we can add in the cabbage along with some soy sauce and again mix this well. We're going to stir fry this together for a couple minutes until the cabbage begins to wilt. And now we can add in the dak, which is also known as Korean rice cakes and we're also going to add in chopped veggie dogs and some sugar. If your rice cakes are frozen and stuck together, I recommend soaking them in water in the beginning for about 5 to 10 minutes before you chop your veggies just to let them thaw slightly and separate them before you throw them into the wok um, but yeah if your rice cakes are not stuck together and are not frozen then you're fine and we're gonna add our water at this time as well we're gonna mix this well let this come to a boil and once it boils we're gonna cook this on medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the rice cakes are cooked fully through and very much softened it's gonna become really really nice and chewy and soft and the sauce should also have thickened a bit as well the rice cakes will basically release the starch and it will thicken the sauce and it's going to become really really delicious i like to give this a really nice mix every few minutes just to make sure it's cooking nicely and if the sauce gets too thick too fast you can always throw in a little bit of water uh, but i didn't find that necessary in my case to also give one of these rice cakes a little try and just give it a little taste to make sure it's cooked through nicely once again the texture is going to be super chewy and soft and i cooked mine for about 10 minutes or so and then they were pretty much ready to go and yeah they were ready to plate so let's plate it now i'm going to top everything with the greens of the green onion that we chopped remember that we separated the whites and the greens now we can add the greens and you can mix this in at the end when the dish is still in the wok as well but i decided to just add it to the top of the final product after it's been plated it's totally up to you what you want to do I just decided to do it this way. I'm also going to top with some sesame seeds, but this part is optional, but obviously recommended. And here we have the final product. Guys, whether you like spicy version of tteokbokki or not, this is so delicious and definitely worth a try. And it's obviously great if you don't like spicy because you can finally try some um, Korean rice cake dish. And this is a completely different flavor profile from the spicy version. So I always say this is still worth eating, even if you like the spicy version, which I love. And yeah, it's super savory and has that kind of umami deliciousness, that deep flavor. It's really hard to describe this dish. I feel like it's such a unique dish and unique flavor i think it's just so good though it's really hard to get this taste in any other dish that black bean sauce is so good and yeah super delicious and oh my mouth is watering just thinking about it all right you guys here it is oh my god so i recommend serving this with some pickled radish if you have any you can buy pickled radish at the korean supermarket it's usually in like the fridge section and you can just cut it up into little pieces, but you don't have to serve it with that, but it'll be delicious. All right, let's have a bite. Ooh, I'm all right, you guys. Look at this. Look at this. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. All right. Cheers. It's so good. Mm-mm. All right, you guys, so that is how I made this delicious black bean dopoki. This is not spicy at all, so this is perfect if you wanted to try Korean rice cakes but you were afraid of the spice. Definitely, definitely try this out. And even if you love spice, this is still so, so good. Highly recommend. It is just chewy, it is salty, it is just everything. So definitely, definitely try this out, you guys. If you need the written recipe with all of the measurements, they will be in a blog post linked down below. So definitely check that out. And if you do try it, give my recipe a five-star review because that helps me a lot. And guys, give this video a big thumbs up. If you guys are interested in trying out more Korean and Asian vegan recipes, you can definitely check out my ebook, Everyday Asian Recipes, that will be linked down below. 
And that's pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!